No, just because you mentioned TNA straight off the bat, why don't you tell me about the sort of negotiation yeah. to bring you in TNA? You sort of did with Vince Russo and everything, but were you always going to be an authority figure? And was Don Callis always going to be your sort of like foil or anti-authority figure that you feud with? No, no, uh, no. Uh, this is hilarious, right? So I get a call and, and Russo's like, hey, Jeff Jarrett is, you know, Jeff was trying to pull Hulk in there for a while, right? Yeah, like yeah, he was yeah. re- like, 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 and, and there were strong discussions about bringing Hulk in. I believe at that time that they had brought Sting in. Um, they had already got Lex Luger that, you know, he was in a calm, you know, and they, they had some, they had some decent weight guys. I mean, they already had D'Lo Brown and then, and blah, 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 and blah, blah, blah. So, so they, they, they had, but they were trying to bring in Hulk. And so, so Jeff was in between, I would say, storylines, and he's like, I want to find someone that hasn't been on TV just recently, that we're not just pulling straight off of WWE or WCW just recently, and, and I want a big guy, you know, that, that people would, they would recognize, but, they, but it's not just another name, you know, it, it, we want to kind of blow him away. And so, so Vince calls me. And I go, dude, I, I, I got to be honest with you, bro. I've never even watched TNA. And he goes, well, what? You haven't even seen the show? I said, no, I, I, I don't watch wrestling, uh, you know, anymore. I, I got two businesses. I'm busy as hell. I said, I'm good. And he goes, would you come to Nashville and watch? I go, yeah, but what's this about? He goes, Jeff wants to bring you in as the next big heel to do a, to, to do, to do a program with him. And hopefully that will then take the period of time until Hulk Hogan comes in. I said, okay, well, I, I, I'm interested. I, I'll, I'll come watch. And, bro, they they had this little nest. You know, you could walk up in the stands. They'd take you over there. There would be about four or five guys always, like Raven and, and, and you know, uh, AJ Styles. And, and just, just, just several guys would go up and watch some of the matches from way up in this nest. And um, so I went up there because I didn't want anyone to know I was there. I, I came, you know, after it started, I went up there. I didn't want anyone knowing. And I watched my chin hit the ground. I was so amazed at the talent they had there and some of the, the greatest matches I've ever seen. Now, listen, you know, there's a lot of people that don't know Jerry Lynn or didn't – Jerry Lynn was not a, a – known name like a huge name jerry lynn is one of the greatest wrestlers of all times he he is he is a franz schumann do you know franz schumann over I, there in europe I don't, right i don't okay so if you so if you ever get to interview uh, ever in your life there's an organization called catch wrestling ah, Jeremy, uh, otto vance yeah that, that's right otto right so he was huge there right this this guy, man, Franz Schumann was one of the greatest wrestlers of all times. Very good friends with Chris Benoit. All these guys kind of had the same stature. Uh, Dave Taylor, mm-hmm. um, you know, from the UK. These guys, some of the greatest matches I've ever seen were Dave Taylor and Franz Schumann, man. Like, like, like where you could you 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 were the only part of the match you're mad at is that it, it, that it was over. Because they, they, they were the doctors of pro wrestling, right? And, and so you'd go in there, and, and so, yeah, I knew Raven. And yeah, I knew a few of the guys. But 99% of all these guys, who in the hell was AJ Styles? I, I never heard of AJ Styles in my life, you know? And so these were your smaller wrestlers. I, I'm 6'6", 300 pounds. These were your smaller dudes. But they were going off, and, and I'm watching Jarrett and, and, and Raven. So I'm watching all these, these – um, these I'm watching all these incredible matches, not knowing ha- half the people that are wrestling. And you just got that idea of it was old. It was like the old ECW where guys showed up to do whatever they were going to give their life up for their, for, for wrestling. And, and most of these guys I'm guessing aren't making anything, <laughs> you know, like literally the old, you know, the old saying of, you know, 20 bucks and a six pack. <laughs> you're doing okay. it. You're doing it for the love. Well, bro, bro, I know guys that would get paid off like twenty dollars and a six pack of beer, and I'm like, how do you, you know, I so so you are doing it for the love, and I sat there, and it was an out of body experience 
And so I, I, I went outside because I drove up with Vince Russo from Atlanta. It was me, Russo, uh, Raven, Disco Inferno, Sonny Siaki, and well, one other guy. Boom, we're up there. And I said, it's not that I want to be a part of it. I have to be a part of it. But do not tell Dixie Carter this because I am going to ask for a lot of money. But I would, I would literally wrestle here for free. That, that, that's when you're raised in pro wrestling as I was. And wrestling is what fed me every meal of my life. And it fed every one of my kids' meals. It's not just a job. It is the history of your bloodline. The Dustin Rhodes and the Dusty Rhodeses and the Cowboy Bill Watts and the Barry Windhams, the Blackjack Mulligans and the Vaughn Ericks and the, just legacy legends, legacy legends, the hearts, you know, the Lions Den in Canada. That shit is not just talked about. That is a lifestyle that is ingrained in you. It is part of your flipping DNA. If you took my DNA right now, it would say, Bob, you know, jackass with pro wrestling in his DNA. Okay. <laughs> so, so, so it's just, it's just part of you. I had to be a part of it. Right. And so, so we go and they bring me in and literally, bro, I beat the living dog shit out of Jeff Jarrett. I mean, in the ring, out of the ring, through tables, through chairs. I, I even on one episode, which was kind of crazy, he wanted me to wrap a chain around his neck into a bumper, and I drug him with a car in the parking lot. Literally drugged this guy. And, and, um, so, so, and then, like, three weeks in, four weeks in, Rusa says, hey, uh, Jarrett wants to kill the uh, angle. I go, what? He goes, he wants to go a different direction. I go, what? He goes, yeah, he didn't know you were so tall. <laughs> and so so that was one of the most polite ways for political BS I've ever heard in my life. I'm like, well, let's see. He's me and him are WWE together. Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure. I you know, I I, I told Russo, I said, I've been six six since I've been 14 years old. <laughs> Jeff has known me for so long. That is the most bogus. So 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 Jeff, I guess, somehow. Did not take a liking to me, which I thought we were good friends. And then he was going to put me just on the free shows. The There was a show, I can't remember the name of it, Impact or something that they did. And and, and in the United States, they would send it out to these it, horrible ex- markets. Explosion, maybe? Was that it? It was Impact or Explosion or something, something like shit. that. It yeah, was yeah. horrible. Right, right. It was in like four markets. Like three people saw it, right? And so I, I, I told, I told Russo, uh, uh, I said, Russo, bro, I, financially, I don't need to wrestle. I, I saved all my money. I, I, you know, I got stocks, bonds, land. I don't, I don't need to wrestle, bro. I said, I was, you know, I, you called me. He goes, you can't quit. I go, the hell I can't quit. I said, this is no big deal to me, brother. I don't want to be somewhere I don't want to be. I mean, that, that I don't want it. I said, I've dealt with all the politics, the WCW, WWE. I've dealt with all the politics, bro. I'm past the politics. I'm good. I'm good. He goes, you got to do this. Now, now, Jeff and Vince Russo are best friends. But it was the oddest relationship I ever saw because Russo would love to mess with Jared. <laughs> uh, it was hilarious. And so I'm like, so what do you want me to do? He goes, I don't know, bro. He goes, let me ask you something. He goes, how good are you on the mic? I go, honest? He goes, I've never heard you on the mic. I go, okay. I said, let me put it to you this way. There is only one guy that is good as me on the mic, and he is a far second. And he goes, who's that? I go, The Rock. <laughs> and he just he just busted out. He popped. He laughed. He's like, you got to be kidding me. And I said, no, I got to be honest with you. Not, no one's really let me get on the mic and be me. But in my head, I know I could be very good. And he goes, that's all I need to hear. He goes, we're going to get you into something where you are like talking and going off. I said, I'd love it. So, so now they demote me to this impact or whatever the heck you were thinking, right? And, and what they would do is they would, they would have one or two of those matches before the actual pay-per-view happened. 
And then I think they did one match after whatever, and that's what was impact. And they shipped it off and, you know, did it right. So the next two or three weeks or four weeks or five weeks, I can't tell you how long it is. I'm showing up and I, I know that they're just like, they don't care who I wrestle, what I do. So now I just turn into a character of this self-absorbed ass, which I'm so good at. And so I started turning everything into Watts. What's up? What's wrong? What's your problem? What's he going to do about it? This is not TNA. This is Watts world, you know? And, and, and so all of a sudden, and they, and they, and they, and so I'm still a heel, which I've never been really able to be other than ECW, a heel. And I was only in ECW for a short period of time. And I'm digging it. But now the fans are going absolutely berserk about me. And I'm saying like in a two, three, four week period of time to the point where Russo said he was sitting back with Jeff and Jeff goes, oh, shit, he goes, we haven't gone over, you know, well, you know what interviews do I have tonight? What matches? Because the show just went on. And Russo goes, the show hasn't started yet because they would start that show with that old, you know, the, the, the wrestling thing, you know, the, the, the statue of the wrestlers. Yeah, like yeah, the, yeah, 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 yeah. The, the, the Greek Roman wrestlers yeah. and, and the, and the music and stuff. And the people would go ape crazy. And then you'd see the dancers in the cage and all this other stuff. And they'd be going crazy. He goes, he goes, that's not the show. He goes, that's, that's Eric Watts. That's his entrance. And Jeff goes, Oh shit. There, there's no, now from what I heard, this is his words. He goes, there's no one that over. And he goes, well, then you need to maybe step out and watch because Jeff, it's every week, this kid. He goes, every week it's like this. So he went out and watched. He goes, what in the hell are we doing, Vince? Why is he on the show? He goes, you demoted him and told me to put him on the show, right? Well, during that time, I'm doing all this. So now he sees me working on the mic. And, he, and Vince Russo is actually the one that came up with the idea. I was, I was having a tough time at home with my wife. And, and we were headed to a divorce after 15 years of marriage. And, and so, and I was telling Russo, well, the one thing you never tell Russo is anything because Russo is, Russo's always been famous for taking real things in your life and putting them on TV, which he said, Eric, but then you can be in touch with it. So now all of a sudden he's like, Hey, what we're going to do is, you know, because, you know, (laughs) we did get into a brutal battle in court. It ended up going five years, but I mean, her lawyers froze my assets. My lawyers at one time froze her assets. We had we had restraining orders against each other. I mean, this was a high level five year in court divorce. So I said, this, and, you know, because I used to say, well, this chick is going to break me, or, you know, blah blah blah. Well, so he came up with this idea because th- because then he 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 does the the director of authority, then has Goldilocks kind of going out coming out with me. I said, bro. Are you ribbing me? He was like, "What?" I go, "You're just adding fuel to the fire." He goes, <laughs> "For what?" I go, "I'm gonna go. I'm going through a divorce. Now you got me with this chick." And he was like, "Is your wife upset?" I go, "Yeah." So then, all of a sudden, so he gets deeper. Like we're definitely like doing innuendos. Like we're having sex. Like one time it was me, her, and Trinity, and she was interviewing me, and I can't, I can't remember. Oh, I, I said, and she goes, and and um, hey, Eric, I got Trinity, and I said, yes. And I'm so excited about the experiment. So I started calling it the experiment, right? Like the threesome was going to be an experiment, right? And so I'm doing all this other stuff. Well, I am coming home and my wife is going off on me. Well, Vince goes, that's perfect. And so we, we do it. So then, so that, then I bring in some high line uh, entertainers that are my friends, Trick Pony, you know, the country artists. So they show me. So I called up my boys. I said, hey, the next time you have a concert, can I come and like, move some of the sound equipment and get you guys water on stage. So they came and filled me by like, giving them water that I was a stage hand that I was just working for a place to stay. Like they had me staying in the bus, you know, then I brought in one of my good friends that was one of the best linebackers of all time, Brian Erlacher for Chicago bears. He came. So all these people are coming in and they're playing this, this story. Like I'm broke. My wife has left me. She's filed for divorce and she's frozen all my assets, which was it was kind of a shoot, right? <laughs> so, so then, and the fun, here's the funny thing: we ended up almost getting back together because he, through all this other stuff, I'm like Vince, 
she literally is going off and he's just laughing his ass off he goes well great he goes does she know how to wrestle i go no she does not know how to wrestle he goes well let's put her on the show i'll get you guys back together because i'll have her just come and beat up goldilocks and i'm like she would love that well so they have her two weeks in a row on pay-per-view she comes in and just beats the piss out of goldilocks in two different matches jumps up so now now me and her are hanging out she's digging me again how crazy i mean this is true life to form that's how vince hide me there 